Ken Whiting with Paddle TV and today we're doing things a little different. I am testing out the Boreal Designs Baffin uh, P3, but to do that, I'm going on a real paddling mission. The family's gone for the day and so I'm doing a 33 kilometer, 20 mile section of river that's really close to me, but remarkably I've never done before. So it's something I wanted to do for a long time. I'm gonna do it and I don't have people filming me today. I'm gonna do it with the old GoPro. So we'll see how it goes. I was thinking about this trip and this mission and you know, it's such a hot day. What do I bring? It's so super humid. You can see the sweat beating off my forehead. That doesn't necessarily mean much because I sweat thinking about exercise, but that's another story. My biggest challenge today is staying hydrated, staying protected from the heat. But what else do I need to bring for a day trip like this? Let's take a quick look at the gear that I'm bringing on this trip. All right, so the gear I'm bringing. Uh, now I'm not bringing a ton of safety gear because this water isn't really that open. I'm always gonna be close to shore. There's cottages a lot of the way and there's definitely a lot of boat traffic in a good portion of the, uh, of the sections. And so I don't really need to plan for an unexpected overnight trip. And so what am I bringing? Here's what I'm bringing. I've got a first aid kit, always a good idea to bring. I've got a cell phone uh, in a waterproof floating case. And then I've got this sucker, the Zolio. The cool thing about this thing is that it is a communicate, it's a communication device that apparently will always work. It functions off of the satellites, the Iridium satellite network. And so what's really neat about it, even though I've never tried it, this is gonna be my testing ground for it, is that uh, when I don't have cell service, this thing still lets me message people, text message people, email people, um, and it even has a function where you can just, you, you press the button and, and it uh, lets people know that, hey, here's where I am, all's good. It's just a, a quick little quick little feature. It also, through the app on the phone, you, uh, you can check the weather report. Again, you don't need Wi-Fi, you don't need cell service. You can always access in that information and you can always communicate with people. And that is an incredible peace of mind. Uh, you know, the idea of it is awesome. I'm gonna bring it and test it on this trip and tell you how it works. Even though I'm not planning for a night out, I am gonna bring a headlamp. This is a beefy headlamp that can really, um, you know, shoot a beam across and catch people's attention. Sunscreen, of course, and then I think my biggest challenge is gonna be staying energized, and in particular hydrated, because you can see I'm dripping already. It is super hot and humid today. And so I'll show you what I'm bringing. So I've got some veggies, some fruit here. I've got a water bottle with ice in it, in there, in this cooler pack, staying cold. I've got lots of snacks. I got a peanut butter and honey sandwich. I've got a cliff bar, I've got a bunch of these fig bars, I've got nuts, another water bottle with ice in it, and I've got some good old chips in here. Really, I'm bringing those because, hey, I like chips, but also for the salt, because I'm going to be uh, sweating a ton today. In the boat, I am bringing a, a spare paddle, and I am using the Aquabound Tango. That's what I plan to use for most of this trip. It's a carbon paddle, super light, the long sleek, sleek legs for touring. But then I'm bringing along the Gear Lab Calic Greenland paddle as a backup in case it, it, uh, the other one breaks for some reason. But also because I am really want to try it for a long tour, see how it performs. Lastly, in this little day hatch, I've got my uh, another cooler bag with a water bottle. I'm bringing lots and lots and lots of water on this thing, cold water. Actually, it's not just water either. One of the Nalgene's is half Gatorade. Uh, the rest is water. The other one is half or a third coconut water, um, which is great for hydrating, and the rest is water. And then the other Nalgene is just all water and ice. So that's the gear I am bringing. Time to hit the water. Got everything? I think so. Onward.
Boreal Design Baffin P3 has a retail price of around 1900 US dollars. It's 17 feet 7 inches long, 23 and 3 quarters inches wide, it weighs 69 pounds or 31 kilograms, it has a capacity of 350 pounds and its primary use is all conditions paddling. Its features are pretty standard for a sea kayak, it's got a retractable skeg, two storage hatches and one day hatch, a contoured seat, back band, and thigh hooks. Got a little bit of a westerly breeze. Man, does it ever feel good to be on the water now, having that wind in the face. I was sweating buckets on shore. <laughs> Man, I sweat a lot. Staying hydrated is always a battle for me, but when it's this hot and humid, I'm just glad the sun's not beaming down in its full force. Otherwise, I would literally melt. You guys would see me become a puddle in real time. This is the, uh, well, it's not the biggest piece of open water. There is another piece of open water, but um, it's one of the bigger lakes that I'm gonna have to cross here. This is probably about a mile and a half, two miles until I get into uh, the narrower sections, which I'm really looking forward to. I have, I've never been there. I don't know about you guys, but I spend a lot of time on Google Maps in the satellite view, just checking out different pieces of water. That is the absolutely amazing thing about paddling, is there's waterways everywhere. Obviously some places more than others, but most places there's so many waterways, routes to choose from. And many places have developed those paddling routes. But even those places with developed paddling routes, there's so many other missions to go on. And yeah, this is one that I've looked at for a long time and now I get to do. Okay, decision time. River's really getting narrow here, and uh, this is new water for me. There'll be some cottages, but there should also be some neat little islands and rocky spots. Can't really go too wrong. Well, <laughs> I may be speaking too soon. It's nice though. There's a noticeable current right now. And this is, you know, it's definitely enough to probably give me an extra mile or two, an hour speed boost. A boat like this, 17 and a half foot boat, designed for speed, I'm expecting to just be traveling, like right now, somewhere around four miles per hour, six kilometers-ish per hour, but, with this extra current, I'll probably get five or six kilometers per hour. I mean, if I get six kilometers per hour, that's 50% boost to my overall speed. So that would be nice. We're dealing with 20 miles here and I'm doing four miles per hour. This is gonna be a five, five hour trek. And that's just straight paddling, that doesn't include taking time to film, but also taking time to eat, drink, just break. There's gonna be some beautiful spots. I'm definitely gonna hop out and, and uh, take a break, but I gotta keep moving. Sometimes you find little gems and I was not expecting this at all, this cool little rock garden, almost like a boneyard. I don't know, it's really cool. Water's up high enough that there's a bunch of different channels through here. Oh, 
it blows my mind that I didn't even know this place existed. How many other places are there like this in my own backyard, in your backyard? Very cool. Time to eat. <laughs> All right, batteries are recharged. Ready to go again, which is good because I still have a long way to go. I've probably gone about seven of 20 miles so far. Uh, so yeah, I got a ways. But here's what I can tell you. I definitely paddled long enough to get a good feel for this kayak. It's, uh, let's start with performance. Performance, it's a 17 and a half foot kayak. It's fast, like a 17 and a half foot kayak should be. It's narrow, it's designed for speed, but it's also designed for, you know, handling rough water. Pretty much any water con uh, conditions that the ocean or a river can throw your way. How does it deal with that? Well, very well, you know, it's quite maneuverable for a 17 and a half foot kayak. Um, so yeah, it's nice. It is heavy. Now this is a rotomolded molded uh, kayak. It does come thermoformed, I believe, as well as in a composite uh, construction. And if I was to get another one of these kayaks, I would definitely go for one of those for two reasons. I can feel the weight on the water and I could definitely feel the weight when I was loading and unloading this kayak. It's not a light kayak. And I don't even have it loaded with all my gear for a, a multi-day trip, which it would be great for. So I would probably go for uh, a lighter, spend the extra bucks and get a lighter version of this thing. But uh, comfort wise, a uh, very comfortable boat. I mean, I'm a big dude, uh, six foot two, 195 pounds and I've got plenty of leg room in this thing. I mean, it's not super roomy, but very few sea kayaks are super roomy. Um, the seat is a very simple seat and back band, but it works. Actually, the contoured seat pan fit my butt really well. Uh, the back band's fine. Nothing negative to say about it. Nothing, you know, nothing, you no know, high, high praise for it either. It's, it does the job as do the thigh hooks. You know, I've definitely, having spent as much time as I have in rec kayaks, I've really come to appreciate uh, support under the thighs to keep the legs up, stop the, the knees from drooping to the side. That just puts strain on the legs. And and uh, this doesn't have that. Not, not the end of the world because the seat pan is very comfortable, at least for my butt. Otherwise, you know what? I'm gonna keep going. I've got some miles to cover and you know, uh, actually I'm gonna check out the zoom. We have no cell coverage here. So I'm gonna see if I can get the weather report and see if any uh, thunderstorms are coming this way. How much of a rush am I really in? You know, see if you can see this. This is the, this is the weather app. I just pulled up the weather forecast hourly. So it's looking good. And that's the next couple of days. This is the hourly forecast, and uh, that's telling me um, the status of messages. For anybody going into the backcountry where you're not sure if you're gonna have cell service, and even then, that's a cool device. I'm, I'm gonna bring this on every backcountry trip that I go on. Why not? Why not be able to message people and let them know you're okay, and even, you know, you can show them their, your cookie cum, crumb trail, show them the path that you've taken and where you are at any moment in time. Pretty cool. Anyway, time to get Pat on. Wow. <laughs> How many times do I, can I say wow? It really is wow. Time to mix it up. Try this paddle for a bit. So what I've been learning from, you know, putting some time in with this paddle um, and from all the people leaving comments who have a lot more experience paddling one of these things than I do and who watch me and 
are saying to cringing, saying to themselves, what a clumsy oaf with a club in his hands. And I would agree with that. But, you know, what I've definitely learned is holding it on this downward angle um, so that the blade actually feels like it wants to dive down is the trick. And it stops the flutter from happening with this paddle. Uh, at the same time though, it tries to pull you over slightly on that side. And so you have to counter that with a little bit of boat tilt or a little bit of lean away from the, the paddle stroke, which feels weird in the beginning, but then you, you don't really notice it after a while. You're just doing it. And then the other thing I've really noticed with this paddle in, and from comments people have told me is longer strokes, you know, pull that stroke, more like a canoe stroke in the sense that it goes right to the back of the boat, well past the hip. Whereas a traditional kayak stroke tends to, well, it does end a lot sooner. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice paddle. Man, it feels good in the hand, but it's still gonna take a while to get used to. Well, I'm now 16 miles into the 20 mile journey. Here's what I can tell you about the Baffin or the Boreal Design Baffin P3. Nice sea kayak. Well, totally, it's a great sea kayak. Is it the right sea kayak for you? Well, it depends on what you're looking for. You know, this is a 17 and a half foot sea kayak. It's fast, but not crazy fast because it's also it's got enough rocker to be maneuverable it's designed for all sorts of different conditions uh, it can handle rough water absolutely um, comfort wise very comfortable you know I've been paddling now for at least four hours and you know I'm not dying in here I'm not you know I'm a little uncomfortable because I've been sitting for four hours but no I don't uh, I find it a very comfortable kayak yeah, kudos to a very simple seat being very comfortable. I really don't have too much else to say about this boat, except to reiterate what I said before about its weight. It's a heavy boat. And so if I were to get this boat, I would probably look and spending the extra money and getting a thermoformed version uh, or a composite version if they're still available that way. Otherwise, I mean, this thing, it's sure it's heavy, but man, it'll take a licking. That's for sure. This thing you don't have to worry about on rocks and that's, it, there's real comfort in that. Uh, that's about all I gotta say. I got four more miles to go here and then my job isn't done because I then have to bike about seven or eight miles back to the put-in where I left my truck. So I still have a lot of day left. I'm gonna hit the gas a little bit here. I hope you guys have enjoyed this different style of gear review video. It's been fun to do, combining a gear review with a real mission. And uh, let me know in the comment section down below. If you haven't seen my other style of gear reviews, then check them out. There's a playlist in the description box. And as always, uh, leave, uh, give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already. Even if you like paddling just a little bit, we got lots of paddling stuff coming your way. So stay tuned and I'll see you again next time.